Hey all. Oop. Sorry. Then I move that. Seems okay. Everybody hear me? It's all right. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see if I get this working again. Uh, here we go. Okay, cool. Um, so, hey, uh, my name's Eric. Um, I, a little bit nervous about this talk, so I feel like uh, it was fu funny to mention that the first line of my speaker notes are, hi, my name is Eric, which is, which is pretty good, but um, and that's my cat. Um, but I work at the Office for Creative Research, um, which is a, 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 I think you'd call us a, probably a data viz studio in, in Brooklyn. Um, it's, I feel like that's not totally the best description of what it is that we do. Um, we're a pretty, pretty small group. Um, I think this, this, is, this is my friend and, and the guy who's started the studio um, talking about it and saying, uh, we make visualizations, online tools, community platforms, and public interventions that increase data literacy, facilitate understanding, and promote equality. Our work is meant to provoke surprise and delight while, deriving, uh, while driving critical thought and facilitating understanding. Um, I thought that was a pretty good description. It doesn't tell you exactly what it is that we do, um, but more or less that, that first part of that sentence is, is the case where we're sort of all over the place. We'll, um, we build websites for science education purposes. We do data sculptures that we've put in Times Square. Um, we're working on a, a community map room project right now. Um, but the project that I'm here to talk to you all about um, is this thing called FieldKit. And FieldKit is very much an in-progress project, so I'm, I'm kind of here to, I oh, can't see that very well, but that's the, that's the logo. Um, it's very much an in-progress project, um, so I'm here to sort of talk about where, where it came from, where it's headed, um, what are some of the ideas behind it. Um, but the gist is, is that it's an open data and open science effort that's aimed at field researchers, field researchers and conservationists. Um, so that is, it's, it's, it's targeted towards scientists, but mostly scientists that do work um, uh, in the field. Um, and I'll elaborate a little more on what I, what I mean by that. Um, so the, the project more or less began here. Um, this, is the, this is the Okavango River Delta as, as seen from space. Um, the delta is, is entirely inland. It's part of a drainage basin in northwest Botswana um, where the river basically just comes to an end and drains out um, right after passing through Angola and Namibia to the, to the northwest there. Um, and although it's been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's, it's considered largely unprotected um, and for the most part generally understudied as well. And there's all kinds of reasons for that, but um, including the uh, geography there. But, uh, um, but those two things are, are really sort of related in my mind, the, the, the difference between being unprotected and understudied. Um, and, and really why that's a problem for conservation is that there's not, there's not as much of a, a sort of baseline understanding of even the current conditions for wildlife in this area um, to sort of suss out whether or not any sort of efforts, um, you know, political publicity or otherwise are actually even working. Um, so partnering with uh, uh, local populations in the area um, with funding from the National Geographic Society, uh, the Okavango Wilderness Project has been able to send expeditions to the river with the explicit goal um, to sort of accomplish those things I was talking about, to sort of build the baseline understanding of the ecosystem in the area um, and uh, raise awareness of, of, the, of what's going on in this sort of amazing ecosystem in the, in the middle of Africa. Um, so the work started back in 2011, and um, we've been going as sort of our, our part as part of the studio for every, pretty much annually ever since. Um, and for, for the most part, I, I think you could describe this as, as sort of a, a conventional science and documentation effort. Um, there's sort of an effort to record wildlife sightings and things like that. Um, but, you know, for our part of it, uh, we wanted to bring something new to um, the way we're doing data collection in the field. Um, and that is both how we collect it and what we do, and what we do with it. Um, so this is this is one of our collaborators, Jacob, who works with a, a nonprofit called Conservify. Um, Conservify is a group that is looking to lower the barriers to entry for technology-based conservation, and, and that's him working with one of the sensors that they designed in the field. Um, and part of what's been done with the Okavango project is to use these sort of low-cost, open hardware uh, solutions to capture a wide array, wide array of information about the area on an ongoing basis. Um, and this includes all kinds of things. Like this is, uh, you can't see this very well again because of the light, but they've um, been working on building sort of 
open source hardware solutions to a lot of sort of expensive sensors. Like this is a water flow um, sensor that, that they're, they're still working on and prototyping. But that's one example of the kind of data that we might be able to collect in the field. Um, this, is a, this is a weather station, um, many of which we can, we can set up in the area to sort of monitor what's going on even after, even after we've left. And with this data on, on our side, what we've been trying to build, um, uh, uh, you know, it, sorry, with all of that data and along with things like location of team members, uh, vehicles, animal sightings, social media posts, uh, we've been trying to build um, a sort of web representation of these expeditions that, that more or less lets folks follow the, follow the, the team and the effort in real time. And I, I think one of the big things about this to me is that there's no... Um, there's not necessarily one single focus to the data collection or presentation here. There's, um, the idea is breadth. So if this looks like there's a lot of things going on, that's, that's intentional. There are a lot of things going on. Um, I'll show some other, some other slides from this. Like this, is, this is one day of, of a sort of journal entry of the expedition, and we've been able to aggregate you know, photos from the field, uh, individual sightings that I'll talk more about in, in, in a second. Um, but this is, um, the idea is that this is one representation of a whole lot of data that's coming out of this project. And I'm even going to try to do my best to show a, a video of how this site actually works, but this is one of those things that probably won't work. Come on, play. Is it going to happen? There we go. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is the representation as it stands. You can sort of see where, where this area is situated in Africa. Um, and this is this is the the main site that we built uh, wh when you when you load up into the Okavango as, as a as a project, and you know sort of following on what I was saying that hardware philosophy was of using these low cost solutions to collect a broad variety of data. You know, in the same way, this this web presence is sort of a low cost software solution to showing a lot of data. Um, you know, for the most part, this is built on other open technologies. We're not spending like a great deal of money to sort of produce this. Um, and this will get moving in a second. I sort of took a bad video of this on my computer. I apologize, but uh, this is sort of the idea that you can you can actually follow the team in real time, like as they move as they move through the uh, the Delta area. You can you can actually sort of explore all of these observations that they're making, um, different wildlife observations to uh, different sensor readings, like on the weather stations. You can get to the that journal section I showed earlier up there. Um, I'm going to move on from this, if I can get out of this video. Sorry. And one of the big ideas of this is that this is really just a, a front end sitting in front of this massive repository of information that we built coming out of um, years and years of going, going back here. Um, this is just you know, a snapshot of, of one query against the API, but you, know, you can see that there's, there's, over, there's almost uh, Almost four million like individual recordings in here, um, and th they're all kinds. They're all kinds of things. Like this is a very like heterogeneous data set where we've got, like right now, this is. I think these are all bat of the day, <laughs> which is a sound recording of bats in the area. Um, sound recording was actually a big part of this project, um, along with daily daily bats apparently. Um, but this is sort of where I, I I came into this project with with all this work existing, and. What the question we started to ask about it is, what can we what can we move on to um, from all of this work that is still something that is still something that has the kind of um, core mission of this project, but uh, uh, is, is something that sort of like builds on the things that we've learned and is repeatable. Um, so. Um, Cool. So the key things to me about Into the Okavango is this idea of it being a low-cost platform. And by that, I, I don't necessarily always mean cost, but um, this was um, cost in this context can also mean things like training team members. It can mean things like upkeep. It can mean um, things like uh, uh, hiring developers to write software for uh, for custom sensors, things like that. And and the platform that we were getting towards providing sort of uh, eliminated some of the some of the pain in getting going with 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 these tools, and also the, in addition to just the financial cost of actually using them. Um, so, this this is sort of a, a set of dichotomies that they got at me about about field work, where there's 
there's there's sort of this tendency because these um, because these expeditions into areas where it might be hard to get to, it might be uh, dangerous to be there, it might be um, you know any number of reasons. Uh, the the expense associated with these expeditions can also mean that they tend to become more narrow, where you might be going there to study one particular aspect of an ecosystem because it's so hard to get there or it's so hard to get a set of equipment there that um, the, the focus starts to narrow and the sort of general usefulness of uh, the data you're producing narrows as well. Um, so part of what I think is good about Okavango is it's moving, it's moving some of that where you've still got this sort of expensive to lead expedition, but um, building a broader base for the kind of information that you can collect once you're out there and doing that mostly also by um, um, introducing uh, low cost tools in the way I, in the way I was talking about. Um, and so, so, so what, I, what I mean about the, the, way, that, the way that these uh, uh, conservation efforts can end up being very expensive um, became clear to me on this other project we were working on, um, which is we were building a set of data visualizations for the Great Elephant Census, which was um, an effort that sort of wrapped up recently to basically go and count every single African savanna elephant in Africa. Um, and if you're wondering how they do that, it's, it's kind of the way that, that, that might seem obvious how they would do that. They actually got in an airplane and actually many, many airplanes and flew these sort of narrow transects up and down um, covering as much area as they were allowed to or that was reasonable to given the terrain. Um, and sort of using models based on, the, based on how elephants move, they can actually take those raw counts of elephants from these airplanes um, and produce um, uh, sort of total counts for, for how many elephants they think, there are, they think there are present in a given area. But one of the things that kind of strikes me about this is this is like a, this is like a, a single, single purpose and very expensive way to, to do this kind of work. And that if you're in an airplane, you know, conceivably you're seeing all kinds of things about the terrain. You're seeing other animals, you're seeing, um, uh, carcasses from poaching, you're seeing um, uh, human densification, you're seeing fires, you're seeing, you know, any number of things. And there's, there's some question about, like, when you mount this sort of um, expedition to do this kind of work, what are the tools at your disposal to actually broaden the base of what you're doing while you're out there? Um, and this is to sort of like, you know, what is, the, what is the orthogonal data that you could be collecting and making useful um, in a larger group? So, we started on uh, FieldKit um, to try and solve some of these questions. We came back to the hardware again. Um, so Conservify, working with Conservify, um, they're, producing, they're working on producing another set of low-cost sensors. This is, this is the board for the sort of base unit that we're working with right now. And what this is, is um, it's basically a piece that sort of solves the com communications aspects of sensors in the field. Um, so when you're getting live data from uh, places where you might have, not have an internet connection, you need things like the ability to store data continuously, the ability to send data over a satellite uplink potentially, the ability to send data over Wi-Fi when it's available. Um, and all of that can be kind of, kind of expensive. One of, the, one of the most expensive com components of systems like this can be the satellite radio, satellite modem. Um, so the idea behind this piece of hardware is that it can act as a sort of a hub between multiple sensors to collect and communicate data. Um, so some of, the, some of the question after that is where does this data go? Um, so this gets to the software. So we wanted to try to learn some lessons from what we did with Into the Okavango, um, which is more or less that we were, uh, had produced this very ad hoc um, system over a course of years that led us to these large sort of monolithic data structures that it was difficult to um, difficult to share or reason about. Um, so this was, this was all stored in sort of a document database and essentially we had arbitrarily uh, deep and arbitrarily structured um, objects that were really trying to capture as much data as possible um, at the time. But w what starts to happen is that we ended up with layers upon layers of these code-driven um, ingest routines. And this is a lot of people writing Python basically to sort of take this data from a field sensor and, or from a form that someone filled out on a computer later on to say, oh, if they want to upload a photo of a bird, they know what bird it is. Maybe we want to take that, um, that bird sighting and add the taxonomy information for birds and then produce a, a document. And it's GeoJSON here because actually the, the root of all the documents were GeoJSON features 
and then everything we were recording had a location attached. But the problem with that, and if you're here for the earlier talk, is that this is a, it's a very side effect process. Um, and the structure in the end of those documents is really only the sort of uh, imprint of these sort of hard to understand um, um, nested uh, ingest routines. So there's a couple things we want to do here. We want to kind of break this apart, um, move a lot of that sort of input processing into a field where the user can do something with it, um, and also get data that we can reason about in a way that we can potentially share. So if we're doing one expedition um, in the Okavango, there might be related expeditions, uh, particularly around uh, bird populations. And we want to be able to share data in some sort of meaningful way. And it, it may not be that that way is, is, you know, in the form of like publishing a paper or something like that, but some sort of meaningful representation of the shared effort of going here and documenting this wildlife. Um, so what we came up with is more or less breaking it out into two different pieces, a sort of strictly defined metadata structure to give us information that we knew we were always going to have about the individual observations. Um, and also bringing some sort of sense of, of typedness uh, to, the, to the other component of the data. Um, and I'll just run through this pretty quick. Um, but this is just sort of the, um, the sort of new ingest pattern that, that, that we came up with. It's pretty straightforward. The idea is that we, a, data can be, a, a, a set of data can be coming from any number of, any number of sources. This can be things like RockBlock, which is a satellite provider, or Twilio, which handles SMS. And we want to be able to pull the, the payload data out of, out of those formats. We want to be able to parse a set of standard formats and also a, a, um, a set of binary packs in the case of that, that device I showed earlier. And we want to be able to map those onto some set of knowable objects um, after the fact. So just to run through what this might look like, just real simply, it's just basically pull something like a CSV out of, out of a larger object, um, parse that CSV, and then produce some sort of user-defined mapping to get an object. And this is not, this is not too crazy. Um, but what this lets us do is use like a set of use a set of standard um, technologies that are out there to get to data that might be meaningful between projects. So this is just JSON and JSON pointers. Um, you know, you can imagine storing this pretty easily, having this be fairly easily editable. Um, and in our case, we're just sort of building a lot of these in advance for the, for the uh, sensor kits that we're starting with. Um, so uh, where are we now? Uh, we're, we're, we've been using a system kind of like this to, to get, uh, to get um, a sort of demo of, of similar functionality to what we had with the Into the Okamago project running on a generic platform like this. So this was something that you're able to go and sign up for and build an expedition, connect a sensor. Um, and get some output that, that is sort of similar to the way we were handling it within to the Okavango projects. Um, and this is in some ways like slightly less ambitious right now than what was going on in into the Okavango, but the, the importance of it, I guess, is that um, this is not something that's bespoke. It's not something that was tailored just for this project. This is a potential platform that we want, you know, people that we're not interacting directly with to be able to use. Um, and I'm getting close to out of time, but it's good because I'm wrapping up. Um, but there are so many more problems for us to solve. Um, one is that, you know, it's easy to say that it's, we can define these mappings between objects and JSON, but there's a lot of user interface complexity behind that. And there's sort of um, some debate about where we want to draw the line between sort of out of the box usability and how customizable it is. Um, there's issues around the sort of taxonomy of those uh, typed objects that we're trying to produce. How do you, how do you sort of decide on what a, what a bird sighting should look like in a way that you can collaborate between projects? It's a huge question. Um, the other one is just these are huge amounts of data that we're talking about. The Okavango project produced about 4 million data points. So if we imagine that you know, we've got even tens of people using this system plowing the same sort of data in, um, how do we deal with that? Uh, those, those are all good open questions that we're working on. We think we have some solutions to this. Um, I would say uh, stay tuned. Um, Fieldkit.org has a, has a, a mailing list sign up. Um, that's our website. That's Conservify. Um, so there's going to be more coming, more coming out of this. But this is going to be an open source project. We're working right now um, to get the sort of license stuff sorted out so that we can have it up on GitHub. Um, but you can find that under our website, um, and we'll email about it once that happens. Um, but 
I think we want this to be uh, a larger community effort in that we're sort of trying to lead the development on this, but I think like I said originally, it's, we're not exactly a software shop, so we're sort of depending on the idea that um, people are gonna have other resources to bring to bear on, on this kind of work and are interested in it. So um, on that, I guess I will wrap up. Right. Thanks all. <laughs>